In today's Wild Wednesday, we're highlighting an animal from Greenville Zoo that's a cute little hedgehog almost, and, and it takes du dust bats. It looks like a hedgehog. Maxine Van Dam is here from Greenville Zoo. Introducing us, you see him on screen now, this Tenrec. Welcome, Maxine. Tell us Hi. about your friend. Thank you for having us. So this is Swayze, and he's a Madagascar lesser Tenrec. So he's a species that's found right off the coast of Africa on the island of Madagascar, and they look a lot like hedgehogs, but they're actually their very own species distantly distantly related yeah distantly related and his he's got quills and you can and you pet him from front to back very gently and I said it almost feels like the the stubble of a beard yes so they do have quills and they use them to do a bit of communication with each other as well as using it for defense so we can tell that he feels really nice and comfortable right now because when they're in those defensive postures they'll go roll up in a ball and have those quills sticking out but right now he's just excited oh to gosh. explore and he'll have them flat where then you can then reach around. And uh, normally found in, on Madagascar. What's his story? How does he come to be a zoo ambassador? So he originally was not from Madagascar. He was actually born at another zoo mm -hmm. um, in Kansas. He's lived a little bit of time in Portland, but most recently he came from us from the Turtleback Zoo to be here with us at Greenville. So he's part of a ambassador program. And with AZA, of course, we work with other zoos all around the United States and the world to support our programming. And you, you have bonds with so many of these awesome animals. What do you love about this Tenric? I mean, you handle so many of them, you can't have a favorite, but you love them. I have really enjoyed working with him because he is so eager to come out. Um, essentially, as soon as he has the choice to be able to go into a crate, he chooses to crate himself. So we want to make sure that we give all of our animals the ability to choose to come out on programs. And so when we think about what we want as an ambassador, those are the ones that are really great to work with because you know they're having just as much fun as we are. Yeah, and, and that's that's the beauty of it. You love seeing people connect with these animals. Um, when, when somebody, you know, classes of kids gather around and meet this ambassador, what surprises them the most? I think a lot of it is that they're not hedgehogs. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is that they are really active. Yeah, and most moving. of people haven't really experienced an animal that has such a intimidating defense, uh -huh. but doesn't have to always use it. And I think we can learn a lot about empathy from our animals ourselves that while we may have our ability to have spikes and quills, we can always then choose when to use those adaptations. And, and this one, can roll into a ball. Who are its predators? So their predators are going to be birds of prey, different types of mongooses, and snakes. So they live on an island, of course, has a lot of variable animals. Yeah. So they have a lot of predators, so they have to use those adaptations to be able to protect themselves. And his diet? So he is an opportunistic omnivore, which means that he eats a little bit of everything. I actually brought a snack on. Oh, please. Um, so let's see can... if he's feeling hungry. Yeah, I would love to watch him eat. And his nose kind of flexes back and forth. He can create a furrow to sprout. Let's see him eat. Here he comes. <laughs> oh, he wow. never says no to a meal. So in his meal right now, he has a little bit of an insectivore diet. So it's a commercial-based diet that has all the same nutrients and proteins as bugs. But we also have a couple worms, which are his absolute favorite as well. But essentially, any time that they can find food, they're going to take that opportunity and eat that so that they can then get as much energy as possible. Mm -hmm. And energy is hard to find, so they have adaptations that help them to conserve it. That's really different for a lot of mammals. And it's fascinating. You can kind of hear him snacking away. Um, and while we, while we watch him, people might be able to catch the Tenric and, and the zoo's other animal species during Sip and Safari this Friday. What do you want people to keep in mind about that before we put event info up? Please come out to Sip and Safari. We still have tickets that are available. It is on the 3rd. It is a wild time, but it's also a great way to experience our animals after dark. I always say for those that love owls, please come to our after hours events because yep. that's when they really shine on the time set. It's their nighttime and their daytime. Well, what great events that you always have and it does so much to, to support the zoo and, and animals like this Tenric. So we really appreciate learning all about it, Maxine. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. The Greenville Zoo Foundation is having its 17th annual Sip and Safari. They also have a beer garden by 13 Stripes Brewery if you choose beer over wine. Also live music by Cami Ocean and The Rhythm. General admission tickets are $65 or $35 for designated drivers, and they are close to selling out.